and the God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon and welcome to the Bryan Board Public Affairs meeting for March 15th, 2016. First on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the March 1st, 2016 meeting. Uh, you've read the minutes. Are there any additions or corrections? If there are none, I'll ask for a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Dick? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tom? Yes. Next is a hearing of public concerns. Anybody present would like to address the board? Seeing none, uh, clerk treasurer's report. The board's been presented with the clerk treasurer's report for the month ending February 29th, 2016. Any questions? I move we accept the uh, treasurer's report for the month ending February 29th. Second. Karen? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jim? Yes. Dick? Yes. Tom? Yes. Uh, next is a rush. <coughs> excuse me, a resolution to ask City Council for additional appropriations for a roof replacement and declare an emergency. Okay, this will be resolution number 8, 2016. It's a resolution asking Bryan City Council for additional appropriations in electric, water, and communications budget for a total of $100,000. For the Bryan Municipal Utilities Main Office roof replacement project and declare an emergency. Um, the again, the, the funds are for a roof repair. Uh, we didn't anticipate the the level of damage to the existing uh, roof here at the utility. We had been battling a couple leaks throughout late last fall. We had a uh, couple contractors in just doing some patchwork and sealing up. But over the winter, being that it was a that it was a, a, a wetter winter with a lot more rain and that type of stuff, um, particularly this office, or if you look up, we replaced it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and those are actually, we <coughs> replace a tile. Um, we'd rob from one in the building, put a new tile in, and after the board meeting, the tile would be brown already. Um, I do know of an evening that I was in here talking with Lori and Rhonda, and it looks like someone took a cup of water and started pouring it out of the ceiling. So. At that time or moment, we started really getting into investigating the last couple of weeks, and what we found was uh, that the roof uh, itself needed to be completely taken off and a new rubber roof put on this place. So um, the 100000 that we're asking for will cover that, and any ancillary is our goal. So questions? It's been repaired a few times in the past. Though. It has some patchwork done to it, yes, over the years. So it's probably ready for replacement. It was ready several yeah. years ago. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any questions? I'm, I'm sorry. I was just going to make a motion. We uh, move to accept the resolution. Second. Karen? Yes. Dick? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay, next is a resolution to enter into a contract to replace the main office roof to waive the bidding process and declare an emergency. Okay, this will be resolution number 9, 2016. It's a resolution authorizing the Bryan Director of Utilities to enter into contract with Richland Company and Associates, Inc. for the Bryan Municipal Utilities Main Office Roof Replacement Project at a cost of $62,000. $820 and waiving the bidding process per Ohio Revised Code 735.051 and declaring an emergency. Um, again, we did uh, in the last resolution ask council to move $100,000 over. We realized that the roof replacement, uh, based on the quotes that we received, and we did have several contractors come in. Um, what we found was there were several that were looking to put band-aids on the bigger problem. Um, this particular contractor was the, the, the individual, the, the, the company that put the roof on 26 years ago. So very familiar with the facility, um, familiar with the, what we have here in place, and uh, the pricing ended up being a little over $6 a square foot, which was very reasonable when it comes to this type of roofing. Um, other than that, do you want to take any questions? I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. We have two roofs sandwiched together, water damage between both of them, water damage in the insulation. 
it's going to be a mess. Um, we asked them when they looked at this to help us move water away from the low spots where they are currently and the way it's been for 20 some years. Mm -hmm. So what they also included was a little hand drawing to show how they're going to put some wedging in and help slope the water to the downspouts which are inside the walls here to get the water off the roof to help us for future. So if we can get another 26 years out of a new roof, I'd be, be real happy. Any questions? Their quote is very consistent with the one we submitted previously. Years back, and they're giving us a 15 year warning. Yes, any more questions? No, I've, I've had experience with that company, and you know, they've company to work with. Oh, oh, good. Good. Yeah. Well, that's good. Can I have a motion, please? Well, so moved. Yep. Second, Bill. Yes, Karen. Yes, Jim. Yes, Dick. Uh, yes. Yes. And just to give you guys a heads up, um, working with Richland and Associates, um, we also, uh, if it was approved by the board, uh, got ourselves in the queue to start uh, around May. That's about as soon as they can work us in. So we told them we we, we had like the board approval, but at least get us blocked in there they were just in time for spring rain <laughs> that's what i was thinking and it's going to be a, a a chore yeah there's a lot of stuff up there mm. that's the other thing with all the air conditioning mm -hmm. systems up there and everything else that's all going to have to be taken out of service mm -hmm. okay next on the agenda just a discussion and resolution to approve revision to the brand communications department rate Addendum Exhibit A, Cable Television Rate Schedule. Okay, so this would be resolution number 10, 2016. That's a resolution to approve revisions to the Brian Communication, Communications Department Rate Addendum Exhibit A, Cable Television Rate Schedule, as hereon attached. So we included in your board packet a copy of our current Exhibit A. Um, rate schedule, as well as the, the I'm going to call it a proposed, but it's more along the lines of the needed one. Um, as we told uh, the board, or explained to the board several months back, that about this time of year, Joe and I would have all the final numbers to bring to you um, to show or reflect all the programming increases that we are experiencing or that are coming our way, and this is what's in place. So what we are going to see in this uh, amended rate schedule is basic cable was $21.65 and it will be bumped to $22.65 or a dollar increase. The biggest hit comes on the programming for us in the extended basic package which was $60.25 previously and it will go to $68.25 or an $8 increase and then a small bump in the digital basic um, which was $11.00 and we'll go to 11.25. So, on top of that, I made note to uh, board members in, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the, the rate schedule we sent off that these rates also affect multi-dwelling units, healthcare facilities, hotels, and motels. And if you remember, the last time we readjusted those rates, it's reflective of the base rate. So whatever that movement was there, they experienced as well. So again, those multi-dwelling will go from thirty dollars to, or excuse me, thirty dollars and fifteen cents to thirty-four fifteen. And the healthcare facilities will go from sixty twenty-five to sixty-eight twenty-five. And note that's the same thing that you uh, we called out in the extended basic. It's just that same movement. Uh, and then again, the hotels and motels that go to sixty-eight twenty-five. We did strike the businesses that declined these fees for the hospitality fee because. If you're not, uh, there's no breakup between Fox Sports or any of those anymore. It's just one block, and if you don't take it, then you're not getting extended basic. And that was one of those things that we acted on uh, previously. And then Joe also updated um, based on the removal of uh, Detroit Network to Fox Sports, the whole umbrella of those, those occupancy fees, if a group would choose to take them and what they would have to pay. So that's what's updated in that. 
But again, we're only working in the Exhibit A of the Rules and Regs. Um, none of the other exhibits are being touched right now. It's just these. Um, you know, there's thoughts that we're looking at. You know, um, with our current subscriber count, you know, this is an expense on the department if it's not passed through or it's revenue neutral of about $176,000 um, a year. So, you know, we are, we're pretty happy that we paid off a note that was sitting out there. We're getting our feet back underneath us. Um, the fund balance takes care of itself in, in, in such a manner that it's not significantly strong or large. It's just enough to get us and keep us going. Uh, taxing it by 176,000 a year will really start to cripple that department. So, you know, Joe and I discuss this a lot. This is never a, an easy topic to, 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 to bring to the board. You know, it's never easy to talk about rate increases or even implement them. But we're at that point now where, like I said, we're just getting back on our feet. We're getting this thing going. Um, we need that to be able to keep going that direction. So this is the recommendation from myself and uh, my team members. So entertain questions. Uh, Joe's here, myself. Unfortunately, it's just the programming costs. I mean, they're holding a gun to your head and they ain't got a gun in their hand. You know what I'm saying? And where this is going to go, I'm sure we're going to revisit this again. Just so the people know that we're not. And we don't have any leverage to negotiate these <clears throat> costs. The FCC saw to that. <laughs> yeah. The industry itself is in some... I, I would say sort of a, some turmoil. I mean, if you follow the industry and what the FCC is doing recently to cable modem boxes and some other things, it's sort of a it, it's sort of a wild west. It's you know? greed. It's yeah, greed. It's all about the money. There's no other way to say it. It's greed. And we're you know we are not a, a large cable operator, and our you know we're operating a system for our ratepayers to benefit the community and and the citizens of Bryan. We don't have margins like our competitors. Mm -hmm. In fact, very, very, very small margins to make sure we keep a fund balance that can support the system, and that's it. You know, we're not looking for this large profitability where we're dispersing checks. So, and the channels that an individual can sit at home with an antenna and pick up for free, we have to pay to carry substantially. So if the board um, tonight chooses, and we would encourage this, you know, more conversation, and, and we really need to have this considered tonight and passed, I'm just throwing that on the table, um, those rates would be effective on those bills rendered on or after May 20th, 2016. You know, we still have a 30-day posting period where we have to let our customer know, customers know what's going on, you know, be it a bill insert or a card that we've sent out, a postcard as well as we need little time to um, get these rates to Lori and get them built into the building system itself. So, you know, we almost have to pre-build it, get the cards out, and then insert it at a certain time when we start a whole building cycle over. So we're on that threshold if, if, if the board chose not to move on this tonight, um, we would be carrying, these would be carrying costs. So you would be taxed that department. So Joe, how long have we been paying for this this way, since February or? January 1. January 1. So we're going to subsidize it from January 1 until we start billing in May. May. So, so we've already kind of subsidized four months of it. So we got to act. Yeah, we do. Right. The committee looked at it you know, on, on our committee meeting, and we recommend to the rest of our board members that we should pass this tonight. So I'll move that we pass the rate schedule as proposed in the schedule. Second. Bill? Yes. Dick? Yes. Bill? Yes. Karen? Yes. Tom? Yes. Resolution 10, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, next on the agenda is to accept a resignation due to retirement. Yeah, so this is the, the, the tough part of the job. Um, Ken Moore uh, stopped in my office several weeks back 
and uh, we sat and talked for quite a while. I know he's talked with Joe and tussled back and forth. Ken really loves the organization, loves doing what he what we do here. Um, he's at that point now where he's got some other commitments outside of the utility, and he has uh, presented a letter of his resignation uh, effective July 31st, 2016, to retire. So, you know, on our end, we're presenting this to the board, um, not for an acceptance or denying him. I wish we could deny him, because I would have a long time ago. But uh, we can't. We're losing a very valuable staff member who has been at the top of this, his game with us uh, from the inception of the communication system. I mean, he's one of those individuals who's carried this on his shoulders. and He's a um, smart man. I, he I, is. He's an asset. Boy, you know, I hate to lose him, but he's got to do what he's got to do. Yeah. He has a life outside of BMU. <laughs> <laughs> will you be replacing or that position? That will be something we will have to discuss at a later date. Well, with, with regret, I'll make a motion that we accept the resignation of Ken. Tom? Yes. Tim? Yes. Karen? With sadness, yes. yes. Bill? Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda, affect semi monthly disbursements. Can I have a motion to pay the bill? So moved. Second. Dick? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tom? Yes. Uh, next is comments from BPA and staff. Um, one thing I did want to bring to the attention of the board, um, we were recognized by APPA for um, the quality of service we provide. And I'm, I'm just sort of skimming this. I, I, I'm trying to get it in a lower layman's terms. So when we, um, as APPA members, uh, AMP as a board, decided to use or pay for what they call e-reliability tracker services. Now what that does, it tracks all the instantaneous or long-term outages that we have. And then they use those numbers, or we use those numbers, for our RP3 report for one thing. But it also allows American Public Power Association to gauge how we do things here at BMU against those across the country. Okay? And what uh, our, our results from the 2015 calendar year was so our average system interruption duration, so basically how long were you off in 2015, if you happen to be off, was 15 minutes, which places BMU in the top or first quartile of the country. The average for utilities our size was 137 minutes. Wow. So on my side, I, I love that because that's the side I come from, and we step back and we forget, and I say we, and I'm a customer in town here too, forget how spoiled we become because 15 minute outage versus an hour plus is pretty amazing. I mean, we're doing things right. So all those capital projects, all those investments that you've allowed those, those department heads to move with is doing the right, it's doing it right. Um, the other wise, the other thing was our average interruption for any customer during that period, just uh, so if it's an individual customer, we were about 23 minutes in 2015 compared to 115 minutes, again, <coughs> for utilities our size. So we look at the large population was the 15 minutes, but the average customer interruption was a little bit longer, but again, still much better than the country's numbers. Um, the e-reliability tracker has been a phenomenal tool, and uh, Al Sullivan and his team, so Al and Matt and Sylvia used to help track all this, and it took three people to really compile all this data. Today with the software package that's included in our power bill, um, Al uploads this instantaneously and it just tracks us for the year and puts, puts out these wonderful reports that we are, you know, we're engaged against those like us. So it's nice to know that we are at the top. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we, we keep pushing that bar farther out. It's a long way to go down if you fall, but the top is where we want to be at. Yeah. So that, that's a good thing. I just want to make sure that Al and his team and Matt, they should take some credit for that because that's the group who makes it all happen. 
Other than that, I think we included this monthly solar generation and hydro generations in your last report. Pretty favorable numbers. We should see the hydro come up. I know Matt's real close or has recently got that uh, the largest unit back up and running down at the hydro plant. So, like I said, should be. We got water going over the dam right now and we have water. So, I would expect those numbers to be a little higher this year. Other than that, that would be it. I think the mayor had something he wanted to cover. Mayor? Yeah, just a couple of things. Our council meeting through the calendar this month will be Monday night, the 21st of March, next Monday. Uh, I passed out the public auction. The uh, Williams County EMS building, 106 South Emmett, will be auctioned off uh, April 14th, along with the old fire 1997 Tahoe with over 100,000 miles on it. But those two items will be auctioned at 5 o'clock on that uh, on that April 14th date, and um, other things coming up, I guess, uh, in the Easter egg hunt this Sunday, or this Saturday in the uh, middle school at 10 o'clock uh, for all the community and so forth, and it's still 520, you still have time to vote for what you don't vote today. So that's basically what's going on right now. Thank you. Okay, Rhonda? No, sir. Clark? No, sir. And staff? No. Tom? Nothing tonight. APA, APPA. It was in Washington. Um, we, were, we were in attendance um, and it all went really well. And good conversation with other like minded people that are trying to push the agenda of keeping public financing uh, tax exempt especially the bond and going to see, trying to see legislators and how important that public financing is for all public works projects because we can't accumulate enough cash. We have to finance roads and sewers and bridges and things that we have to do in the municipal side and state side and some of those other things. It's, it's interesting to see how what the government might do to figure out a way to balance the budget. <laughs> so we have to remind them that you know we're out there trying to do some, you know, some positive things. Also fun to to communicate with other utilities our size um, and just how they're doing and what well, that part was fun. So also attend some training for governance and that turned out well, it was good too. So people were represented. We were there with people from California, Idaho, different places and how they do hydro is a lot different in, in the Northwest and, and bigger projects than we have. So it's just interesting stuff. So good, good, good conversation. That's it. Yeah. I wish Ken Moore the best. He's a good friend. I just wish him the best. And, um, please get out and vote. Hmm. And I want to reiterate what Brian was saying. I read the article in the newspaper yesterday about how well Brian has the electric department, the whole utility, to be honest. But And we have <clears throat> talked in the past many times about how good and reliable the service is here. I just want to stress to the public that it, it is key and, and they should be proud of the system they have here. So, and good luck to Ken Moore. Mm -hmm. that it? That's it. Okay, I want to agree with Karen. Yeah, we're going to miss Ken. Uh, I also attended the APPA meeting with Bill and Brian, and uh, I thought it was very informative. We got a lot of good information on federal legislation uh, that could affect us in the, in the future. And, uh, cybersecurity, that sort of thing, uh, is well worth one. So, um, with that, uh, we go into two separate executive sessions to discuss the employment and compensation of a public employee. So can I have a motion for a brief recess, please? So second. And there, there may or may not be action taken. If there is often, can I email it to your fax and take Sure. Can I call the roll? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sergeant. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.